Android applications won't do anything until a certain type of message is broadcast by the Android operating system or any other applications. Suppose you want to use, you want your app to react in some way when a system event occurs. You may, for example, have built a music app and you want it to launch the app to start playing music if headphones are connected and stop playing music if the headphones are removed. How can your app tell when these events occur? Well, for this we have broadcast receivers, which you will understand in few minutes. This whole mechanism involves the implementation of broadcast intents and broadcast receivers together. So, in this session, we will learn about how broadcast intents broadcast the system-wide messages to other components and how broadcast receivers listen for that specific broadcast intent. And we will also learn how to create custom broadcast. We'll also discuss the security concerns and how to get over it with using local broadcast, which allows you to send broadcast within your app instead system-wide applications. Broadcast intents are intent objects that are broadcast. Intents facilitates communication between two components. So, in addition to providing a mechanism for launching application activities, intents are also used as a way to broadcast system-wide messages to other components on the system. Broadcast intents here in this mechanism is completely separate from the intents used to start activities, which is a foreground operation that shows what the user is currently interacting with and sent via start activity. It will only affect one activity to accomplish the specific task. Whereas a broadcast intent, it's a background operation that the user is normally not aware of and is sent via send broadcast. By default, can affect multiple applications which are registered for receiving the intent. Broadcast receivers are components that listens to what is going on and allows you to register for these system or application events means they do something in response to that message that is broadcasted. An application listens for specific incoming events sent by send broadcast and by registering a broadcast receiver. Broadcast intents can be originated from the system when certain events happen in the operating system. For example, a broadcast announcing the screen has turned off or the battery is low or pictures was captured or can be originated by any other application. You can even set your app up to launch a music when you connected headphones. So it will run in the background when it receives the message that headphones are connected and respond by launching your music application. Although broadcast receivers don't display a user interface, as they run in the background, even when your activity is closed. So for example, your music app to post a notification to tell the user about an upcoming event of headphones connected. They may create a status bar notification to alert the user when a broadcast event occurs. So broadcast receivers are implemented by extending the Android broadcast receiver class and overriding the on receive method which is required to listen for specific broadcast intents. When a broadcast intent is received and delivered to on receive, at this point, the method has five seconds within which to perform any necessary task before receiver is destroyed. It is important to note that a broadcast receiver doesn't need to be running all the time. In the event that a matching intent is detected, the Android runtime system will automatically start up the broadcast receiver before calling the on receive method. Like the system completes a boot or lose a connection to a wireless network when Wi-Fi state changes. So you can specify these actions as shown on the screen inside intent filters of your app. Your app can broadcast custom intent as well. That means they will be defined by developers. Custom intent can contain data that user gave from the screen. If we want our application to broadcast a custom intent, we need to send one. To broadcast the intent to all the interested broadcast receivers, there are two major classes of broadcast. Either use normal broadcast, which are sent with using send broadcast method, 
or with order broadcasts, which are sent with sent order broadcast method. So, after sending the custom intent, you need to register the receiver, which defines the action for custom intent in intent filter for the receiver inside Android manifest.xml. Send broadcast method are completely asynchronous. That is, the broadcast events or intents are received by all the receivers in an asynchronous fashion. The receivers are run in an undefined order, often at the same time. It's efficient, but receivers cannot use results from other receivers. Sent order broadcast are delivered to one receiver at a time. As each receiver executes in turn, it can propagate a result to the next receiver or it can completely abort the broadcast so that it won't be passed to other receivers. The order receivers can be controlled with the Android priority attribute of the matching intent filter. Receivers with the same priority will run in an arbitrary order. If you want to allow receivers to propagate results or abort the broadcast, you must send an order broadcast using send order broadcast. Let's now understand how this whole mechanism of broadcast receivers can be implemented. In order to create the broadcast receiver, these are the steps. A new class needs to be created, which is a subclass of the broadcast receiver class, with the onReceive method being implemented of this base class. And whenever the event occurs, Android calls the onReceive method. An application listens for specific broadcast intents by registering a broadcast receiver. There are two ways to register it, either within the code, for example, within an activity, or within a manifest file. To register the broadcast receiver statically, you register it in Android manifest.xml. The same effect can be achieved by registering the broadcast receiver programmatically or dynamically using the register receive method of the activity class together with an appropriate configured intent filter object. So as seen on the screen, this is a class which is extending Android broadcast receiver class like this. Here you can see the on receive method. So as you can see, this is how the broadcast receivers are implemented by extending the Android broadcast receiver class and overriding the on receive method. So we have created a new class named custom receiver, which is extending broadcast receiver. So after creating the broadcast receivers, the next step we know is to register it. Let's give it a shot with Android manifest. Here, receiver entry must be added containing one or more intent filters, each containing the action string of the broadcast intent for which the receiver is required to listen specific intent as you can see in the example. And remember, just like any other component, we define this receiver element inside application element. Alternatively, to the static registration, you can also register and unregister a receiver at runtime via the context class. Register receiver method either in onCreate or in onResume activity methods, and unregister receiver methods either in onDestroy or in on pause activity methods. You can see the code snippet on the bottom of the slides. And as you can see, the register receiver method of the activity class together with an appropriately configured intent filter object. Do not forget to unregister a dynamically registered receiver by using unregister receiver method. If you forget this, the Android system reports a leaked broadcast receiver error. For instance, if you registered a receive in onResume methods of your activity, you should unregister it inside onPause method. Broadcast receiver is very important component of Android. Here is the list of a few important system events, like the action when time changed or when system booted completed, and lot more. So feel free to check out this broadcast action from these links. We talked about implementing onReceive method of base class, that is, of broadcast receivers class. If the event for which the broadcast receiver has registered happens, the onReceive method of the receiver is called by the Android system. Here, 
This example shows the on receive method takes two arguments. The context. The context object you can use to access additional information or to start services or activities. And second, the intent object with the action you can use to register your receiver. Custom broadcast. The action string which identifies the broadcast event must be unique and typically uses the application's Java package name syntax. For example, the following broadcast intent including a unique action string and includes the package name as a prefix. This action needs to get described in the activity and the broadcast receiver as well. You know that how we have sent custom indents using send broadcast method, which we have learned from previous slides. So here is how you are going to attach the action using custom indents. And here is the code to unregister your registered broadcast receiver by calling unregister receiver method. Android incorporates security features and works with developers and device implementers to keep the Android platform and ecosystem safe. And when we are working with broadcast receivers, we need to consider a few things in terms of security. So let's understand them one by one. Using broadcast in Android applications sometimes introduce problems as receivers use with the context and can be received by other applications too. So you must consider cross-app boundaries. The intent namespace is global. Make sure that the intent action names and other strings are written in a namespace you own, or else you may conflict with other applications. When you use register receiver method, any other application may send broadcast to that register receiver. You can control who can send broadcast by using the permissions. And when you use send broadcast or send message, normally any other application can receive this broadcast, which you can also control of who can receive such broadcast through permissions. This means access permissions can be enforced by sender or the receiver. To enforce a permission when sending, you supply a non-null permission argument. To send broadcast, only receivers who have been granted this permission by requesting it with the user permission tag in their manifest.xml file will be able to receive the broadcast. This receiver will only receive broadcast intents that have the required permission. And to ensure a permission when receiving, you supply a non-null permission when registering your receiver, either when calling register receiver or in receiver tag in your Android manifest.xml. So the only broadcasters who have been granted this permission by using user's permission tag in Android manifest.xml will be able to send and intend to the receiver. So, none of the security issues exist when using local broadcast manager class, since it used to implement secure communication mechanism within app components. Use the local broadcast manager to broadcast and to register a receiver as provides you a secure way since there are no cross app communication. This example at the bottom of the slide shows how to use local broadcast manager to send and receive broadcasts. It really is just an easy as creating an intent object and calling send broadcast using that intent object and same for register receiver as well. In the on resume, intent filter is created to register receiver for designated action. Intent filter constructor takes the action as a parameter so it can receive the broadcast with this action. This code shows how this code shows about registering receiver for the intent filter by using local broadcast manager and register receiver. After that, receiver has ability to get broadcast with the action named action custom broadcast. To learn more, be sure to check out the reference links about broadcast receivers. Our next practical will help you practice on implementation of broadcast receivers. Keep learning and thanks for watching.